Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Oracle Park on the shores of McCovey Cove. We're excited to be here. It's a pretty interesting event. Sports Tech Tokyo World Demo Day. It's kind of like an accelerator, but not really. It's kind of like Y Combinator, but not really. It's a little bit different, but it's a community of, of tech uh, startups focusing on sports with a real angle on getting beyond sports. We're excited to have our next guest, who's an investor and also a mentor, really part of the program, uh, to learn more about it. And she is Gayatri Sarkar, the managing partner from Hype Capital. Welcome. Yes, thank you. So, thank you for inviting me pretty here. Pretty nice, huh? Oh, I just love <laughs> the view. So you said before we turn on the cameras, well, first off, Hype Capital, what do you guys invest in? What's yeah. kind of your focus? So Hype Capital is uh, part of the one of the biggest ecosystem in sports, which is Hype Sports Innovation. We have 13 accelerators all around the world. We are just launching the world's first eSports accelerator with FCCon and SK Gaming, one of the biggest gaming company. So we are part of the ecosystem for a pretty long time, and now we have Hype Capital, our VC fund, investing in Europe, Israel, and now in the US. So you mentioned that being a mentor as part of this organization is something special. I think you're the first person we've had on who's been a mentor. What does that mean? What does it mean for you? But also what does it mean for all the portfolio companies? Sure, I think I, I'm a mentor at multiple accelerators, but being a part of Sports Tech Tokyo, I saw the very inclusive community that is created by them and the opportunity to look at various portfolio companies and also including our portfolio companies as part of it. Uh, one of our portfolio company where we are the lead investors, Fun With Balls, they are part of this. What's it so, called, Fun With Balls? Fun With Balls, That's very good, interesting name. name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're from Germany, and okay. they came all the way from Germany to here. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited because, as I said, it's an inclusive community, and sports is big. So we are looking at opportunities where have deep text where it can be translated into various other verticals, but sports can also be one of the use cases. And that's our focus as investors. Right, you said your focus is really on AI, machine learning, you have a big data background, a, a tech uh, background. So when you look at the application of AI in sports, what are the, some of the things that, that you get excited about? Yeah, so for me, when I'm looking at investments, definitely the diversification of sports portfolio. How can I build my portfolio from eSports, gaming, behavioral science, in sports to AI, ML, um, AR, opportunities in material science and various other cases. Coming back to your question, it's like how can I look into the market and see the opportunities that, okay, can I invest in this sector? As I said, like what's the next big trend? And that's where I want to invest. Um, obviously, founder market fit, product market fit, promise market fit, because there's a fan engagement experience that you get in sports, not in any other market. The network effect is huge. And I think that's what we VCs are very excited in sports. And I think this is right right now the best time to invest in sports. So promise market fit, I've never heard that before. Mm -hmm. What does that mean when you say promise market fit? Interesting question. So promise market fit was coined by Union Square Venture, VC fund, and they think that where there's the, the network effect or your engagement with your consumers, with your clients, with your partners, can create a very loyal fan base, and I think that's very important. You may see that in other technology sector, but not it is completely unparalleled when it comes to sports. So I request all the technologies that are actually trying to build their use cases. They should focus on sports because the fan engagement, the loyal experience, the opportunities, you'll not get anywhere else. Right. And I think this is the market that I and other investors are looking forward that if deep tech investors and deep tech technologies are coming into this market, we see the sports ecosystem not to be a trillion dollar, but a multi-trillion dollar market. Right, but it's such a unique experience though, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, some people will joke that fans don't necessarily root for the team, they root for the jersey, right? The players yeah. come and go. We're here at, at Oracle Park, which was AT&T Park, which was SBC Park, which was, I can't even remember, <laughs> Pac Bell, I think as well. Um, so, you know, is it is it reasonable for a regular company that doesn't have this innate, you know, kind of a connection to a fan base that a lot of sports organizations do that's historical and family based and, you know, has such deep roots uh, that can survive maybe down years, can survive a crappy product, can survive, you know, kind of the dark days and generally they'll be there when things turn back around. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that reasonable for a regular company to try to get that relationship with the customer? So you asked me one of the most important question in the investor's relationship or investor's life, which is the cyclicality of the university, uh, on the, of the industry. And right. I feel like sports is one industry that has survived the cyclicality of that industry because 
as you said, a crappy product will not survive. You have to focus on customer service. You have to focus that, okay, even if you have the best product in the world, how can I make my product sticky? You know, I think those are the, these are the qualities that we are looking into when we are investing in uh, entrepreneurs. But the idea is that if we are targeting startups and opportunities, our focus is that, okay, you may have the world's best product, but the founders should have the ability to understand the market. Okay, there are opportunities. If you look at Facebook, if you look at various other companies, they started with a product which may be like, okay, friend side, dating side, and they pivoted. So you need to understand the economy, you need to understand the market. And I think that's what we are looking into the entrepreneurs. And as to answering your question, the family offices, they are actually part of the sports startup ecosystems. They are saying if there's an opportunity because they are big, they are giant, and they're working with legacy techs like Microsoft, Amazon. It's very difficult for the legacy techs to be agile and move fast, so it's very important for them if they can place themselves at a 45 degree angle with the startup ecosystem and they can move faster. Right. So that's the opportunity for them in the sports startup ecosystem. All right. <laughs> well, Gayatri, thanks for taking a few minutes and hopefully you can find some uh, some new investments here no, uh, over the so course much. of the day. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. She's Gayatri, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We are at Oracle Park on the shores of historic McCovey Cove. I got to get together with, with Big John and uh, practice this line. Thanks for <laughs> watching. We'll see you next time.